it's Stephanie from Mrs. D's Corner. So excited to be here with you today. I am going to show you the binder system that I have used for many, many years as a special education teacher. Share with you what each binder is, what the function of each binder is, and how they all work together for me. Now this is the system that works for me, so if you don't have space for all of these binders, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I have eight different binders, um, there may be a way for you to combine them or you do them digitally. You might just have to think outside of the box a little bit, but this is how I organize all of my special education paperwork and keep myself sane so that way I can get everything done within my contract hours most of the time. Um, you will find in the video text here, you'll find links to all of the things I'm going to share with you. You'll also find some links to previous videos. We did a special education organization where I did show you a lot of these binders and I went through a lot of them, opened them up, shared you or showed you what was inside. That's not really what this binder is go this binder video is going to be. I'm going to share more of the function, what the differences are between all of the different binders and how I use them. So that way you have a better understanding of, you know, what the difference between the IEP planner and the IEP caseload manager binder is. Um, so I want to share all of that with you today. So keep in mind if you want to check out any of the links to other videos um, or other resources that I'm sharing within this video, they're going to be in the text of this video. So welcome. If you're watching this live, welcome if you're watching the replay. Um, welcome if you're watching this on YouTube as a replay. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get updates of when our newest videos come out. So let me first show you the two binders that I get the most questions about, about how are they different, which one do I need. So when it comes to that, that would be the IEP caseload management binder and the new all-in-one IEP lesson planner. Now they are very different resources. And this is my response to anyone who has asked. So if you've asked this question, this has been my response to you. The function of these resources is very, very different. What I use these binders for is not the same for each one. That may be different for you, but when I created them and how I use them is very, very different. So the IEP caseload binder really is my answer for me to keep all of my special education paperwork in one place. This is not where student data goes. This is not where parent contact goes. This is not where any of my IEP meeting or IEP writing paperwork goes. It's not anything for substitutes. It's not original copies. It's not anything that um, paraprofessionals are in, are in their binder. And it's not really anything that's in my IEP lesson planner either. So what is inside of this binder? This is my caseload management binder. This is where I keep all of my caseload information. So who is on my caseload? What services do they get? So really your IEP snapshots, um, your IEP snapshot of your caseload, whose IEP is coming up when. It's all inside of this binder. So if I have a smaller caseload, why is my binder so small? Or if I have a larger caseload, my caseload binder might be a little bit bigger. It just depends. So you're gonna have student profiles in here, I also keep all of the data sheet original files in this binder. Why? Because I have them all tabbed out. So if I need, if I have a student who is exhibiting a behavior or I want to take some data on a new skill or I need, you know, just additional copies of a new data sheet that we're using, all of my originals are going to be in my caseload binder. I do have an original copies binder. This is more for the papers that I'm going to use every single day, or I need copies of every single month, or copies that I need every week. So our behavior sheets that we use daily, inclusion services sheets, bathroom charts are just charts for the month, toileting sheets. So these are all additional copies. I keep them in plastic sleeves, and I keep all the copies in one sleeve, so I can just pull one out when I need it. Now if I have a new data sheet, I'm gonna pull it from my caseload binder, if we're going to be using it frequently every day or I'm going to be using it every month or every week, I'm going to give it a spot in my original copies binder. That way, if a paraprofessional or a substitute comes in or another professional that works with the child comes in, they know, go to the original copies, there's more copies of Stephanie's data sheet in here or there's more copies of that behavior sheet, it's in here. If I need an additional calendar for whatever reason, the bathroom calendar maybe got soaking wet and we need to transfer that data to a new calendar, it's all going to be in this binder here okay so that they function very differently 
This is just where I keep everything printed so I don't have to worry about going on to Teachers Pay Teachers or logging into my computer and printing something out, worrying if there's paper in the printer, worrying if there is ink in the printer, um, or if technology is going to work with me today. I already have all of my original files of all of my data sheets that I have, and so they're all in this binder here. That is what the caseload binder is for. Now, when it comes to the all-in-one lesson planner, this is meant to help you with um, your lesson planning, which is not something the caseload binder or any of the other binders does. This is your lesson planner. So uh, you either can get it from Amazon and it'll be shipped to you as a hard copy, or you can purchase it from Teachers Pay Teachers and it's a digital copy. You can edit it, change the cover if you'd like, um, all of that fun stuff. So it really depends on what you want to do with it. Now, I have um, a a video that I didn't link but I'll come back and link it for you of different ways to prep this IEP and lesson planner. I like the binder version or the happy planner disc the most because you can add pages in, take pages out. It's just really functional for a special education classroom. That is my preference. That doesn't mean that's what's best. You do what's best for you. So what is inside this lesson planner and IEP planner? What's inside of here is really going to be data sheets that you're going to need um, for related services. So are all of my students getting all of their services for the month? Or are all of my students, so let's see, here's a January one. I just opened it up really quick. This is the January related services. So it keeps it in line with your calendar. So that way you can keep track every single month did all of my students get all of their services. There's also check sheets in here for you to have your monthly to-do list, your weekly priority list, your actual lesson planning pages, your long-term range planning pages. The one thing that is in this lesson planner that is also in the IEP caseload binder are the student profile sheets and the IEP snapshots. I wouldn't, me personally, keep them in this IEP planner. I would put them in the IEP caseload binder, but it's in here if that's how you choose to have it. What else is in here? We have um, IEP goal tracking sheets, we have accommodation sheets, IEP meeting, meeting minute notes. Now some of the stuff that I included in this when I created it was based off of the needs of what you had told me that you needed in, an, in a lesson planner that was missing from other things out there already. So some of those things I have in different binders. Again, that's what works best for me. If you like them all within your IEP lesson planner, by all means, please keep them in here and do what works best for you. Um, I just wanted to show you the differences between all of the binders that are in my system that works for me. So this is the lesson planner and this is the IEP caseload binder. I also showed you my original copies binder. So there's the first three. You won't find the original copies binder linked below. I just made this cover and honestly like even the spine doesn't have a cutesy little spine or anything. It was just something not Pinterest perfect that worked for me that has just worked for me forever and that's just how it is. When it comes to student data, student information, student work samples, student progress notes, notes home from parents, this is where the color-coded student IEP binders come in. So I don't keep this information in the IEP caseload management binder. I don't keep this information in the IEP lesson planner. I would take that those data sheets out of the lesson planner and put them in their individual color-coded IEP binders. Why? Because it's all in one place. If a parent comes in for a, a last minute meeting or if you know Stephanie has an IEP meeting coming up, I can just pull her binder. I don't have to pull six different binders to pull from things. I keep it all in one place. And that's my personal preference. So what is included or what do I keep inside of this color coded binder? So I will keep their progress notes from the past couple of progress reports, um, report cards if necessary need to be in here. I will also keep any data sheets, work samples, all of that good stuff. I will print out a copy of what their goals and objectives are. Again, I have trust issues with technology, so I like to have everything printed because you just never know if it's going to work, if it's not going to work, if there's paper, if there's ink, like all of those things. I just want to be able to pull a student's binder and have everything in front of me and not have to worry about um, wasting time on technology or anything like that. So I'm also going to put their progress reports, like I said. Um, every marking period, I'll put their work samples in behind here. If I get student notes home, I'll put them in the back. It just keeps everything truthfully in the same place. Again, so when I have a meeting for a specific child or if, you know, a parent requests to see data, I can just pull Stephanie's binder and all of her data is in here. Everything that I have on this child, work samples, everything is in here. It's not spread across multiple binders. So again, this is what works best for me. This is the color-coded student IEP binder. When it comes to parent contact, 
Um, in the IEP lesson planner, you will find a section for parent contact. And what I did was I pulled from this free resource, which is the parent contact binder. And it has already been updated. It's a free resource for this school year with the correct date and everything. I just didn't print a new cover. So what I do is again, because my classroom is color coded, there's a binder. I just took construction paper, three hole punched it. And each, you know, Stephanie would be orange. I'm, of course, I don't have an orange one in here, but let's just say this, um, this is orange. So I would flip to orange and then here's all of Stephanie's parent contact. So this just outlines like, when did I talk to Stephanie's parents? What method did I use? What were the comments or concerns? And then what are the next steps? What do I need to do next? Why do I keep this all in one binder? Why do I not put this in the student IEP binder? Because I will keep this next to my phone. Um, just in case, you know, a parent calls while I have, you know, my, my duty or at the end of the day or my planning period, I keep this right next to the phone. And that way it's just easy for me to grab, flip to that, that section or that student section and write it in real quick and I don't have to pull student binders if they're across the room or if I move them or whatever it may be. So that's why this is in its own binder. And I also know if they want to see something, I can just pull all of that whole section and that's why I don't put multiple students on one page. Each student has their own section. And if I were putting them in the IEP planner, I would do it the same way, but that's my personal preference again. Another binder that I utilize in my classroom is the parent or the para educator binder, the para professional, um, the, the IA, whatever the word is for para professional, what you use, that is what this binder is. And these are for the paras. So I will prep one in the beginning of the school year for each para, but it's their responsibility to really keep track of it and put different things in it. So what's in here? This likes classroom expectations, school expectations. When they get their school handbook, it can go in here. What's their schedule? There's also a table of contents at the beginning. So like medical information for students, what information do they need to know about accommodations and modifications, um, any classroom information that they may need for like personal care, um, reinforcers, they will get a copy of their own like student pages. So the student IEP snapshot, the student profile pages, they will have access to all of that. And really just a lot of data collection and like cheat sheets for what accommodations each student has or what a, a it may look like to take data in inclusion setting for Stephanie or what it may look like to take inclusion data for another student. All of that information would be in here and they could put whatever in here that they wanted. I would just give them the base with all the expectations and everything in here so they had their own touch point for what their expectations again and everything included with that are. I also love to have a student or a substitute binder because you never know when you're going to be out for whatever reason. There's always unplanned emergencies that we have that, you know, you never just know when you're going to need to have a substitute. And so you never know what substitute you're going to get if it's unplanned. So I just like to have everything in one binder for that person. Again, mine is all tabbed. There's lots of blog posts and videos out there about what's inside my substitute binder. And then I do like to keep like additional not sponge activities or like additional activities, but I will keep a couple of actual activities prepped and that in the event that I am going to be out on an emergency, I can text the para, I can text admin, my teacher friend next door, my paraprofessional and be like, grab XYZ out of the file folder or out of the bin or whatever it may be and do this for ELA. And so everything they need to do with the classroom and students is in the, the substitute binder. Um, but then the actual activities, I may even keep a couple in the back that are evergreen or ones that what they can do any time of year just in case. So I like the subs to have their own binder as well. And then when it comes to IEP writing and keeping track of the IEP meeting and when I have to do what and all of that stuff with the IEP writing timeline, that is where my IEP toolkit comes into play. And below this, I've also linked the how to prep the IEP toolkit with the IEP blueprint. It explains the differences between the two. Essentially, the IEP blueprint is the video trainings that teaches you in six minutes or less the different time along the IEP writing timeline, what you should be doing when leading up to that IEP meeting. And so the IEP toolkit gives you all of those principles, checklists, downloads, templates that you need to implement that without having to start from scratch. So you can print them together. And I had a request to do that to show how it would be prepped together. Um, but the IEP blueprint is digital. So you can see I can't click to play on this page. I would have to open the PDF on my computer, but I wanted to prep it this way. So what is included in here? 
here. In this binder itself is where I'm going to find my IEP writing timeline, it's where I'm going to find my IEP calendars, it's where I'm going to find all of my letters home for reminding parents or asking parents like, hey, when's a good day and time to have an IEP meeting. All of my questionnaires that go out to other staff members, so general ed teachers, the parent questionnaire, the, profession, the paraprofessional, paraprofessional questionnaire input form, the student questionnaires, anything that I'm going to need aside from student data to write an IEP or schedule an IEP meeting is going to be within my IEP toolkit. I like to keep it all in one place. I keep it in a specific order. Again, watch the video that's linked of how to prep the blue kit print and the IP toolkit together. That way I know like, okay, I finished this step. Now I need to go here. Here's everything that I need to complete this step with fidelity and integrity. And then I can move on to the next step. So that is what and why I have a separate like IEP writing IEP toolkit for myself aside from like the IEP binder um, and the, the IEP planner. So how this works with the IEP caseload binder, the IEP caseload binder again is just going to house my data sheets and it's going to be the aftermath of having a new IEP. So I update my caseload information after I have that IEP meeting in my IEP caseload binder. I'm gonna update the IEP snapshots, the student profiles as needed. Um, I'm gonna pull any data sheets that I need out for new IEP goals. I'm then going to add them to my original um, copies of binder so that if I need multiple copies, I can just pull one out each day or pull a new one out each week. And then as I complete those data sheets, they're gonna be housed in that student um, color-coded IEP binder. So it's a lot of different binders, but this is the system that really works for me. I know that if I need a specific data sheet or I need a specific paper or something, I know exactly what binder it's in, I know exactly where to go, and I can easily say, um, let's just say my parent's name is Mrs. D, and I can say, so Mrs. D, can you go grab Stephanie's binder please, because I need to put in these data sheets, or here are these completed data sheets and work samples from Stephanie over the last two weeks, can you please go put them in her color-coded IEP binder, or just go put them in Stephanie's binder. And so the pairs are going to know what color each of the students are, right? So like Stephanie is the color orange, that's what this sample binder is here. So your pairs are going to learn this over time as well. It becomes really, really quick. So you can hand them this, the work samples, the data collection, and just give this to them, and then they'll know exactly go grab Stephanie's, put it in here, and here's how I put it into this binder, so it's all in one place. Again, this is the system that works for me. I know it's a lot of binders to some of you, um, and to others of you, you may be like, that's fantastic, I love this so much, um, or maybe I only need a couple of pieces of this, I've already figured out my IEP writing, or I already have student binders, but I really need to organize this. So there's not one way that organization works for every single teacher or for, you know, just for a self-contained classroom or just for a resource teacher. And it's not really dependent on like, I'm a new teacher or I'm a veteran teacher. It really can vary year to year or even like your caseload to caseload, marking period to marking period if you get new students in. Um, but for me, these binders are really like my set and stone starting place. And from there, I can adapt things as needed for specific students. So please take everything that you've learned in this video and soak it in like a sponge and then take that information, what you've learned and mold it to fit the needs of your classroom, your caseload, what you need organized as a special education teacher, the space that you have available, whether it's in, you know, on a cart, it's in a classroom, or if you're in one of our special classroom closets, um, whatever it may be, take this information and just shape it into what is going to work best for you. Um, if you have additional questions about IEP organization or want to see inside of some of these binders more, I urge you to check out the different links that I have below this video or in the video text here because there are lots of other videos on each of these individual binders. There's blog posts, there's so much information out there for you. If you can't find anything that you're looking for or need a different explanation or wanna see something else, just let me know. You can comment on this video, you can send me an email, stephanie at mrsdscorner.com or you can send an email to support at mrsdscorner.com and we are always happy to help you and figure out what's going to work best for you, your students, and your classroom this school year. Thank you so much for being here. To learn more about my binder system, how it works for me, and how it could potentially work for you, and really learning what the different function of each of these binders is to keep your classroom organized and to keep you sane as the special education teacher and caseload manager. I will see y'all in the next training.